Hey, somebody shout, don't get mad at Holy Ghost because when he comes, he reproves sin. At least that's what my mama that's sitting here taught me when she'd whoop me with that belt and with that switch and be crying. I thought, how in the world she loved me? And she'd be crying when she's hitting me. Come on, somebody. And according to Proverbs 23, 14 and 15, if you don't beat your children with rod, and I don't mean beat the blood out of them. Come on, somebody. But I promise you, if you'll beat Glutus or Maximus, There's a nerve that reaches from there to the brain that no drug has the power to reach. You will not only, amen, protect them in this life, but you'll save their soul from hell. Thank you, mama. For not sparing the rod because I was crying. Hello? Anybody breathe? Breathe? But when Holy Ghost comes, that's what he comes to do. See, Jesus came into the temple in Matthew 21, he made in 13, and said to the day, to see, Jesus, if he was gonna come to town, he wouldn't go down, hey man, to the local courthouse. He, 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 wouldn't, he wouldn't go where the big governments is at. The first place Jesus would come to if he walked through town was to the churches. He'd come to the synagogues. God help us, some of the churches are synagogues. Hello, and the first thing he did, he said, my house should be called a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. It's a place you're supposed to come to be intimate with me, to fellowship with me, to know me, amen, but you've made it about everything but me. Come on, somebody. And Jesus walked in there and he pulled out a whip. Somebody shout, Jesus with a belt, get the image in your mind. Daddy had his belt that day, he went to whooping. Somebody shout, Holy Ghost whooping. Come on, somebody shout, you cannot see wonders without first seeing whooping. Whooping comes before wonders, I'll prove it to you. Because when daddy went through the house and started cleaning house, overturning tables, amen, and cages with doves in them were opened, amen, and the doves started flying free. Well, that's what we need Jesus to do again, is to come in the house and start with his belt, the belt of truth. So the dove can get loose. Come on, somebody, somebody shout until daddy brings the belt of truth. The dove can't get loose to work in our midst and among us. And when Jesus got through running out all those and the stuff they'd brought in that had nothing to do with him. Look at the neighbor say, every church needs a good bowel movement. Hallelujah. Then verse 14, they brought to him the blind and the lame and he healed them. His wonders came after he whipped. We don't want a whip in Jesus today in modern Christendom. Come on, somebody. We just want a wonder work in Jesus. But I'm telling you, if the church modernly is going to see a wonder work in Jesus, hit the aisles and altars of the houses of worship again. The worship's got to be him again. And if it's about him, you must understand when he comes, he will come with the belt of truth, Ephesians 6 and 14, and he will tell you things you may not necessarily want to hear. Come on, somebody. But I promise you one thing. The truth may hurt you. He may hurt you with the truth, but he will never comfort you with a lie. The Holy Ghost will not lie. And I don't know about you, I welcome him, chastise me, getting my stuff, getting my bit. And this is what the modern church in America has got to welcome again. Hello? Because everybody's offended. Amen. They didn't look at me right. Hello? You know, I walked out in the graveyard one time and I couldn't find nowhere quiet enough to pray before revival service I was in. And I thought, well, I'm going to walk out there because they sure ain't nobody talking out there. I walked back in after it was, uh, it done been dark for a while. And one old guy and he said, Brother Mark, where you been? I said, I've been out there in the graveyard talking with the Lord. He said, man, you ain't scared to walk around out there in that graveyard. I said, no, there ain't nobody out there going to bother you, man. They're gone. Hello? I said, no one out there will bother you. They're dead. They're not there. Somebody shout, that's what's wrong with the modern church. She's too alive. When she gets dead, come on, somebody. When she gets so dead to sin again, that's the time she'll become alive in him. And when you're that dead to sin, amen, Chip, don't get on your shoulder so easily because Christ is ruling and reigning in your heart. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? 
See, God said in Hosea chapter six, the Bible said in the word of God in verses five, God said, I will cut them with my words or I will hew them and cut them with my words even by the words of my prophets. Somebody shout, a real prophet will cut you. He'll come and he'll point and he'll say, cut it out. Come on, somebody. He'll cut it up. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost? Ain't you tired, amen, of these prophets of prophets? They just have personal prophecies. They just call people out and tell them everything they want to hear. Don't get me wrong. A prophet will deal with that. But I'm charging and I'm calling, amen, for God to raise up real prophets again. Ones that come and are sent to their nation and sent to the leaders of the church and are sent to the leaders of their country. They cry loud and they spare not and they show their nation their sin and they cry out, repent before it's too late. Amen, when you study the prophets of the Bible, unlike the Pope, when they come to their nation's leader. They don't cry out global warming. They cry out a global warning. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost? Listen, when Holy Ghost comes, keep the theme in your spirit. Somebody shout, he's going to rebuke sin. He's holy. That's the first thing he has to deal with. 